All right, call to order the Monday, November 27th regular meeting of Municipal Council here at the South Edwardsburg Community Center. It is uh, roughly 6.43. The CEO and I were late due to a wastewater and water meeting um, facility tour in Prescott. Our apologies. Um, the second item on our agenda is the approval of the agenda. Uh, just looking before I ask for that to the clerk, there are, are going to be a, uh, a couple of changes to that agenda. Um, do we do that in advance of the motion? Uh, and uh, during the actual motion, it will be added. Okay, so one motion. Yes, Two we share the motion that the uh, has for the approval of the agenda. There's also a motion for the motion. Okay. And then we just write the second motion of approval of the Okay. Okay, I think I get it. So then, so then I can ask. So the ask for it be on the floor, and then ask for the change. Right. Okay. So can you bring it forward? Well, sure can. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My pleasure. Moved by myself and seconded by Mr. Martel that the municipality council approves the agenda as an amendment. Yeah, with the removal of twelve uh, G and twelve H. And we're awaiting a report for those items, and that report will be there for the December 11th meeting. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Okay, just so we know why it's up. Any further changes to the agenda? Okay, seeing and hearing none, then I'll call the question on approval of the agenda. All in favor? Uh, Uh, the report is over tech. Well, we can over tech slide on the Good. Uh, so, number three is disclosure of pecuniary interest, uh, conflict of interest, and the general nature thereof. Does anyone have a conflict or pecuniary interest to declare tonight? I have two of them, Your Worship, 12A and 12E. Both of them are boneyard related. Have you filed paperwork with Alloy? 12A and 12E. So, Joe. Joe and Joe. So, you'll step away, Councillor Martel, for both those items, correct? Right? Right. Okay. And any further? Anyone else? Right. Me. None delegations and presentations, and I think I'm correct in saying we do not have it. Okay. And so, we're on the consent agenda. Before we get to consent agenda, when we get to number seven, I always goof this up. I think I've asked every single time since we get the consent agenda. The, <laughs> the business arising from, from previous council meeting minutes, uh, if any, um, does that number disappear then with consent agenda? We just go directly on to, I think I had, I forgot my paper, but 9A or 9T or something. Do you share that for someone that is going to help for additional questions? That when I send the provisional additional stuff, get everything carried on to the Senate, we'll give up the additional additional questions for clarification of specialties we have. Okay, everybody understands? Yes. Okay. Does anyone then? So I guess, all right, so then consent agenda. And agenda items listed under consent agenda are considered routine, no longer require a further discussion or enacted in one motion. This the exception to this rule is that a member may request that one or more items be pulled for discussion and voted on separately. Everybody gets that. Okay, so does anyone have any items that they want to have pulled out? I don't think so. I was thinking of an item just because we have people in the audience to talk about it, but I think we're just gonna consent that was what I would be. Uh, are there any that does anybody want to pull? No. Okay, so I think for me, I just want to confirm um, 
again, I left my paper on the table at home, so my apologies, but um, five, E, that committee of the whole would have had the budget presentation, correct? That's the, okay, so I want to pull that one. And just for the record, I want to pull, uh, sorry about this uh, to the clerk, my apologies. I just doing my stuff again tonight, uh, C and D, and it's and it's not to rediscuss them. It's just, I think, I think I just want to have those, just want to have those not on consent. Just so we have to move the motion past the motion. Uh, sorry, C, C and D on nine, sorry, nine C and D. Is it pulling both of these? Yeah, it's not, yeah, yeah I'm pulling both of these. That's good. Okay. All right. So then, Councillor, anybody else? No. Okay. So then, Councillor Martel, can you bring the recommendation forward then, please? Yes. Yeah, so we're removing C, D, and E from correct. We are removing E on um, five. So five E for the minutes, and then we're removing nine C and nine D. It's also five. I don't need the minutes. Five. I don't need the minutes to be removed, though, do I? So, for five days, you want to use the best you want to Five E, I do. Five E, I do. There's just a couple of things there that I want to make sure that I. I just want to just clarify if there's something right now for it's going to be for the motion itself or PC. You're also removing 5D and 5H, the 9D and 9D. Sorry, so it, under the motion, we've got A, B, C, D, E, and F. Which ones are we removing? That I don't understand. This is the matter. This is the minutes. This is the action. This is the minutes. Moved by myself, seconded by Mr. Lonnie Snail, the Municipal Council receives and approves the following consent agenda items as presented. Regular Council, October 30th, 2023. Public meeting, zoning bylaw amendment 2073 and 2084 Dundas Street, October 23, 2023. Board Management Committee, September 18th, 2023. Committee of the Whole, Community Development, November 6th, 2023. And Public Meeting, Township Official Plan and Zoning Bylaw Amendment, November 20th, 2023. Good. All right. Questions, comments regarding these items? My apology for the late notice to everyone. Nothing? All right, then I'll call the uh, vote. All in favor? Okay. And then, so then we can move on to the minutes for five. No, oh, wait, no. We're going. <laughs> so now <laughs> this is where the confusion arises for a number C, for a number seven. So do I discuss the business arising from, or is that just the previous council? Previous. Okay, so we're on to eight then. Yeah, we're on to. We'll get, we'll get there eventually. By the end of four years, we'll have the <laughs> like perfect. <clears throat> so, um, so then we're on eight D then, if I'm correct, and not that one, right? Okay, so Councillor Martel, I think you have um, item uh, eight D as well. Then I do not have that. Let me go to that. It's, uh, it's in front of me. Okay. Any other pending that was beyond consent? The mayor has a his chair to confer because we don't want the other members being yeah. sign that on your way by two. Thank 
Moved by myself, seconded by Deputy Mayor Stephen Billabong, that Municipal Council receives and approves the minutes of the Committee of the Whole Administration and Operations Meeting dated November 13, 2023. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Does anyone have anything to discuss from those minutes? No, not so during that meeting, we um, we had the budget snapshot. And again, my apologies, trying to find the minutes on every time. We had the um, the budget snapshots, and and in the snapshot, it showed the decommissioning of the Spencer Building. And we uh, indicated that uh, there was potential, or there could be potential, uh, instead of us going for straight up decommissioning, that there were discussions that potentially could happen with our counterparts to the building. They were interested in building a third path. Uh, my question to staff is uh, that's noted in the minutes. Have we had a discussion with North Friendly yet? Uh, through, the, uh, through the chair, we, we have not actually. Okay, so to get that to happen, do we need to give direction for that to happen? I just want to get that ball rolling so that if it's part of a discussion item, that it could at least be the first formal discussion. Uh, to the chair, I would say that the first step is to establish that it's approved and then to bring that to the record. We can move to reach it to the north. Okay. All right. Uh, further questions in regard to these minutes? All right, hearing none, then I'll call <laughs> all in favor of these minutes. Okay, and then. Okay, help me, clerk. 9A is a uh, resolution of support for base load power. Uh, Battery, battery energy storage project. And Councillor Dillabo, I believe you have that item. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Martel. Whereas the Ventner Energy Storage LP is proposing to construct and operate a long term reliability project as defined with characteristics outlined in the table below under the long term request proposed, which is by the independent electricity system operator. Unique project ID, the long term reliability project LT1 066 9 1, LT1 066 9 2, LT1 066 9 3. Naming the long term reliability project is the Fentner Energy Storage Project. Legal name of the component is a Ventner Energy Storage LP, Technology and Long Term Reliability Project, Battery Energy Storage, Mass, Maximum Contract Capacity, Long Term Reliability is up to 300 megawatts. Property identification number, the PIN number is 681 390 370. And six eight one three nine zero three seven one, and whereas to the LT one RFP proposal that received the formal support of the local traditional authorities of all project commu communities in which the long term reliability project is located, in the form of a support resolution will be awarded graded criteria points for the purpose of ranking. And the proposal in relation to other proposals for the contract under LT1 RFP. All right. <clears throat> so we've had uh, base loads, um, own public meeting. We've had our own public meeting. Um, this really, what we're signing an agreement to today is the support the municipal municipal support to get them us through the point system portion am i correct in that i'm just looking to staff so so what we're what we've been through with this project this baseload correct 
issues. Right. And so what we are approving for base load today is getting them getting them through the first. Um, we're giving municipal support in principle to get them to get them through. You know, they have another support with Indigenous as well that gives them a point system and they'll be further evaluated on that, correct? But this is this is just to get them through that first system, first RFP to get them as high up as they possibly can if you're qualified. Yeah, uh, Mr. Jay, it, it, it is basically just sort of principle support uh, for the for the submission of this uh, LV1 and and as part of that there's a, a, a letter that comes along with this one um, that outlines a dollar value per megawatt hour um, at, at a at a number that that you know should they get approved realistically can be can be negotiated but it's the the initial dollar value that that's been uh, asked asked for or indicated by uh, by their company uh, up to 300 megawatt hours right and it, that letter accompanies this um, that letter of support as well right, right. CDF I think it's called right okay <clears throat> so we've certainly beat it up we've had lots of conversation about it um, is there further discussion tonight before uh, we pass this along? Okay, so on, <clears throat> on these, I'm going to look to clerk for guidance. Um, these can be controversial items. Um, can I call for a report vote? Or does it have to be one of the members of council? The, the, the chair may call a report vote. Typically, one of the members of council does not vote as the chair. So we the chair with the vote. So we have to get the chair Okay. Thank you. Go vote. All right. So I'd, I'd like to offer to be reported for Indicated on here then. All right. So Councillor Martel, how do you vote? Yay. Councillor Smale, how do you vote? Yay. Councillor Ward, how do you vote? Yay. Deputy Mayor, how do you vote? Yay. And the mayor votes yay as well, even though I guess it doesn't matter. And so unanimous pass. Okay. Let's do the same thing on the next one. So the next, we're on to 9B, if I'm correct. Oh. Uh, sorry, Roger. Right. Okay. Right. That's 9B. Right? No, it's like 9, he's got 9A to the world. So I have that one. Yep. Right? Yep. There's other, there's two, there's, there's, the, there's the support here, then there's the CDF uh, support as well. Oh, okay. Uh, I got to, yeah. So that's, that's the second half of the first Of this one. Okay. So, and then, okay. Are you ready? Okay, so we've already voted on it, right? That's correct. 9A is done? Correct. That is the second page of the motion of 9A. Oh. So, Okay, so that's so council board should have nine B I do, but it was, should, did you read both pages? Did you read both pages? It is preferable, but you did uh tell us for it that you may or didn't tell a lot uh there'd be the office clause. I never realized it was an option. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can always go to the operative clause yeah. if if it's a yeah, mile it's long. Awesome. It's preferable to read the whole thing. No, I can't. Okay. So it's a so we are on nine B, correct? It's a two pager, <clears throat> and away you go. Okay. Uh, is the DNS supposed to be a order book? Do you order that? I guess. Okay, yes. I do that, but I think we do it at the end. Yeah, we put it right on the floor. Okay. Uh, so moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Wadi Smale. Whereas Skyview Best Limited Partnership is proposing to construct and operate. Long term reliability project as defined with characteristics outlined in the table below under the long term request for proposals LPI RFP issued by the Independent Electricity System Operator, IESO. Unique project ID of the long term reliability project LP1 074 7 2. Name of the long term reliability project Skyview 2 Battery Energy Storage Project. Legal name of proponent, 
Skyward Best Limited Partnership. Technology of the Long-Term Reliability Project, Lithium-Ion Battery Energy Storage Facility. Maximum contract capacity of the Long-Term Reliability Project at megawatts is up to 450 megawatts. Property identification number in is 68138-020121. And 68138 one three eight dash zero one two two six eight one three eight dash zero one seven one six eight one three eight dash zero seven five and six eight one three eight dash zero seven one seven six and whereas pursuant to the LTI LT one RFP proposals that are always that receive the formal support of the local jurisdictional authorities of all the project communities in which the long-term reliability project is located in the form of a support resolution will be awarded rated rank criteria points for the purpose of ranking in the proposal and in relation to other proposals or contract under the LT1 RFP. That's page one and two. All right, so very similar to um, 9A, only this is a potential project. It has the potential to be another 150 megawatts uh, larger. Um, I think it's worth noting in their letter of support, their letter of support moved from their initial approach, which I believe was $500 per megawatt hour to 750 megawatts per hour which would put them exactly the same as the $1,000 per megawatt hour through um, base load. So basically it puts the max that they could owe at 300,000 per year. I think it's, it's just worthwhile noting that, that there was that little change from when um, uh, potential was here. They did up their offer um, a little bit for for our support. I know we indicated that that those numbers um, were uh, substantial, that the community benefit fund was was really, really well received by this council and by, by everyone at the table. And we look forward to those dollars, but those dollars ultimately were, there was some room in those for negotiations should they actually secure um, uh, contracts uh, out, of, out of this, that they actually get to the build stage. So, um, those dollar views, we will see them again for a further discussion at some some point. But it's just the basis behind behind our agreement. Okay, and did you want to record this one then as well? Yeah. Okay. Yes, please. Thanks. So or okay, is there further discussion on the potential battery bass? Anyone? We've had a pretty thorough discussion. They've been through two public meetings, one of their own, one of ours. Um, we've had the opportunity to review and discuss um, any of the information that came from those meetings. Further discussion at all? Yes, it's a long ways away before we got the eyes across the piece. Yeah, this is this is it's just this gets getting more than you can get. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so they can submit. Okay, so hearing no further comments or questions, then I will start to ask the question. Councilor Martel, how are we going? Councilor Smale? Yeah. Councilor Ward, yay. Councilor Nova, yay. Myself as a yay. Okay, unanimous. Yeah. I really messed up the number and system on the back of the computer, so I apologize. <laughs> And now we are on to item C, which is surplus uh, tanker auction results. Uh, Councilor Martin. Is that what Martin said? Uh, I have it here, actually, I think. My apologies. When I took it off of consent. Okay. It's okay. Councilor Martel, so I'm signing a second. Not your first radio, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Moved by myself, second. Deputy Mayor Stephen Villabar, Municipal Council, Director Treasurer, $70,762.50 from the sale of the surplus tanker into the fire department vehicle reserve fund at 
as recommended by the Committee of the Whole Administration and Operation. Okay, so I ask for this one to be pulled. I just think um, when we sell when we sell a surplus vehicle, where is it normal for the surplus of a fire department sale? Where would the surplus normally go? Uh, good chair. Um, I think the it would it would go back to the department for uh, reserves to for replacement costs for for different people. So, I mean, I guess or any other areas of the fleet, you would have the same the, the same recommendation as far as we we sell a. Uh, Public works truck or a new surplus as we buy new equipment, we would go back to the reserve of, of that department. Okay, so is this setting a precedent for that, or has that already been set in the past? Uh, to, the, to, to the mayor, um, it, it's it's been a few years, but we did have uh, we did take uh, our previous uh, excavator and uh, loader. Uh, Two option and those those two items actually received a pretty good, uh, Very good. value and, and it did go back into the uh, public works. Okay, and there's nothing there's nothing to say that I mean I and I, I'm I'm sounding like I'm not supportive of this. I'm 100 percent supportive of this. My worry was that I guess at the end of the day we still can direct it to go where we wanted, if we wanted to top up winter reserve, we could still use this to top up winter reserve, even though it's a capital <laughs> thing. And I know we've used surplus in the past at the end of the year to top up, but like, I'm... What has happened in, in, in other cases through that surplus has been sort of yeah, if there's an overall pension surplus, it may, it may be directed to to, to right. different accounts or you, you, usually based on that uh, by uh, by your capital. But uh, I think it, it, it's much better suited in the fact that we know that there, there's going to be future vehicle replacements yep. and uh, it, 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 it it's just, just it, it, it just seems like the right place to put that back in. In, in, in those areas. Yeah, it's fire truck. It's going back into fire. Do you, do you, I, 100 yeah, no, I 100% agree. So uh, I just thought the other thing I wanted to recognize is that we did this through Gov deals. Correct. And the number we got is, fan, I think, fantastic. Right. I think it's we got a lot of value back out of this. And I think the reason I pulled it out was to know how much, how much we actually got back from selling a surplus vehicle. I think. The number is really, really good, and it'll bolster, help bolster that reserve. It's quite a bit. I mean, that's equal to one percent in tax, so it's pretty good. Okay. Further comments, questions? I have a complicated question. Uh, the money that does does that stay in for vehicles only, or can the fire department use that money for other? So, chair, it's it's in a it's in a dedicated reserve fund for people. That goes for the fire from any department. In order to just fire department. Yeah, but if the, you said earlier the public works sell the truck, does it stay in reserves for a truck owner? Yes. Okay. Good. 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 Okay. Anyone else? All right. Then I'll call the question. All in favor? Good. And so naming of block master meadow subdivision streets, Councillor Smeno. I think we have that. I do. Thank you. Uh, Move by myself and seconded by Chris Ward, Councillor Chris Ward. Whereas the township received an application to the municipal asset naming range policy requesting the naming of three streets within the proposed Lockmaster Meadow subdivision development. And whereas the Lockmaster subdivision development would like to confirm the proposed street names to be incorporated into future design and development plans and schedules. And whereas the period of for public comment on the naming of three future municipal streets has concluded with no negative comments being received by the township, and whereas the municipal asset naming, renaming policy requires council to endorse the naming of municipal streets through a resolution 
the official name of the current future Mr. Hostet. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Council of Appropriation of the Township of Mary Cardinal endorses the naming of three streets within the Lockmasters Meadow Subdivision Development in Cardinal as follows Lockhouse Street, Balsam Street, and Confire Lane. Confirm, sorry. And further, that a copy of this resolution be forwarded to the United County State of Gravel with notification on the street name. I apologize for the uh, amount of that has been made of the to the words. Take the notes. Interesting. So let's go kick. Okay. Okay. Um, any questions or comments regarding this? No, I, I I was actually sort of like pulling it aside as well, just 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 to you know mark the date, so to speak, to say you know yeah. what we yeah uh, I know it was a bunch of back and forth on on, on getting names established and uh, you know with with public input and and, and various compromises along the way, but we got some names here and uh, you know hopefully the, the the next big step is just around the corner as well and we can uh, start to actually put these streets down on the ground, which would be great. So that's, yes. that's all I can say to that. Yeah. Uh, anyone else? <clears throat> no, I. Uh, can't wait. Yeah, I um, I just think it was too, um, I don't know, it's all part of this process and I think anything to do with, with getting closer and being almost done to getting, you know, shovels in grounds, hopefully to, to get this subdivision finally started. I think, you know, if we're naming streets, we should celebrate the name of every single street and hopefully that, you know, they get a shovel there as quickly as possible to, to get these going. And I just... I felt it was too important to leave uh, or to put on consent agenda with, you know, just the very uh, normal items. This one's not a normal item, I don't think. So, um, uh, and with that, my comments are done. Anybody else? No? All right, then uh, I'll call the question on in favor. Uh, uh, All right, so then with through all of that, and we are on to item E, which is the group, group benefits RFQ award, and Councillor Dillabaugh, I believe, got that. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Martel, the Ms. Powell, the Council Award, the group benefit tendered to WA Pagement and Associate Limited, and direct staff to sign a broker record letter to WA Pagement for a duration of no longer than five years. All right, questions? Deputy Mayor first, anyone else? Chris Afton. Uh, do the chair to a treasurer. If after five, if say for instance, uh, two years, second year that prices go up, we can still shop, right? And put them out or is, are we locked in here for five years no matter what? Um, through, the, through the chair to the deputy mayor, um, so the broker of record is is it who can negotiate around the top. So um, really, they they would be looking after after our best interests anyway. So with the actual benefit cost, that's another they can they can shop that on our. Uh, yes, and I, I, I realize that and understand that. Yep. But if say for instance, it's way too high can we still go to bfl or whatever or are we locked in with these guys for five years that's all i'm asking i think there would be um, um a clause either way that should we not want to continue the relationship we would just have to give notice okay that's all i want to be clear that it would not help possibly in five years thank you Spoker services, mm -hmm. right? It was spoker services. Mm -hmm. uh, well, what's my first question was similar to the deputy mayor's in it. So it has to be five years. That is the normal they signed to, or is that we signed to last time, or is that just they they they've been our broker for I think well over twenty years, okay. um, with no real agreement in place. Um, you know, five years is a is just a reasonable um, number in. In the fact that it will be done once every council term, so so that way, um, you know, the next one might just be four years to one side that it's always on the top year of, of election. Yeah, good. 
Okay. The, the more on off years of election, the better, right? The better. Yeah. That way, it's not a worry for that first year. Right. Yeah. And, and I don't need to see all the analysis. So I know, that as as it, you mentioned as well, the people over here that they're not the lowest priced at the overall cost percentage wise, but uh, but they do have greater benefits that they expect to bring, which will give us a savings. Is that that's did I read that correctly? That's the only joke with that. Yeah, it was really a question of service. So uh, when when Dave and I met with, or sorry, the CEO and I met with uh, the Port GM and the Port Office. Uh, office manager, um, the big the big concern we had was we do get great service from them right now, uh, and going with someone else just for a little bit of savings and cost didn't didn't warrant the risk of of upsetting that because uh, they've been uh, very um, very responsive when uh, we had issues with sunlight. Our, our uh, actual benefit provider to do the work on our behalf to uh, solve any issues that we have. It's a, fair enough. So, was this a, this wasn't really a tender process we did though, right? So we're not in no, those. Okay, I just want to make sure there's no complication there. Okay, fair enough. Uh, thanks. Okay. Uh, further questions, sir, councilor? No. Okay, then. So it's been moved and seconded. Yeah. All right, so uh, then I'll call the question. All in favor? Five year agreement for WIP. So that part is done. Then we are on to the financial Thank you. Have a good night. Thanks. We're on to item nine. Uh, 9F then, right? Township, township, um, 2023 township financial audit. I mean, and sorry, um, Councillor Martelli, you've got that. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Chris Ward, that Municipal Council receives the 2023 audit plan and authorizes the treasurer to sign the engagement letter as, re as a requirement of the annual audit. Right. Are there questions or comments on signing the engagement letter? No, this this one had, I'm going to say this deal is probably a long term, but it had some some increase in fees, but it wasn't significant. So, it was it wasn't as significant as I was uh, as I was going to say. Ours is small, right? It's fifteen hundred bucks. Yeah. That's the through the chair, yes, that's our increase this year. Tiny. Yeah. Larger or smaller here. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> uh questions, comments on the letter right now? All right. All in favor? Good. Okay, so then we move on to the audit plan and deputy mayor, that's uh item nine G 2023 port financial audit plan. Uh and the deputy mayor, I believe you can bring that up. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moved by myself and seconded by Council Mayor Talbot. The Talbot Council receives and includes 2023 audit service plan as presented to M and P uh key charity accountant as recommended by the Port Mayor All right. Questions, comments? Yeah, this one I don't like. I don't like the injuries. It just seems something seems wrong there to me. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Is it under risk assessment or is it? Um, I think it was oh, out of the regulation. It's page, page, yeah, page. I don't know. Yeah, new, six, 64 yeah. 175, right? Yeah. Is new assurance development. Yes. And new and reporting development. Yes, and, and uh, those, the type of audit um, that the port has to do now uh, is with IRS, so it's a different standard than right. what the port is, or sorry, than what the township is. So it's not entirely surprising that the cost is the same, because right. it is two separate audits. There's no uh, real coordination of efforts because it requires two skill sets. <laughs> was there a PSAP before or not? Yes. It was be it was before and now they've gone to, to the international, right? To the yeah. Other. Yeah. So so what triggered that then? Because you know it seems like it's the same port to me that it was two years ago essentially. But different regulations by the so, uh, the regulations changed, which caused us to fall into the new category. Yeah, yeah. new reporting developments. Yeah. No, no, I get that. So like I saw that we had new reporting developments, but what caused what changed us from these kind of two sides but that are acronyms that are put to the, the big categories. So public sector accounting standards, so PSAB, right? Board right. changed in 20, 2020, right? And then we've had to change since then. That changed in 2020. All right. So further, nothing further. I mean it's just a big increase. I think you're where you're going is you want to see if we're to tender. And and I think we've already had that discussion. So I think we'll see that for next year for both. So um, if there are no further comments, then we'll call the question. Seeing none, call the question all in favor. Plans approved. I think they're probably doing it already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So now we are on to uh, number 10, right? Correspondence? Yep. Okay. Councillor Wood, I think you've got that. I do. Moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Waddy Smale. That municipal council receives the correspondence listings for the following dates as previously circulated November 1st, 2023, November 8th, 2023, November 17th, 2023, and November 22nd, 2023. Um, comments, questions on um, correspondence? Anyone have anything? That, no? Okay, so then let's approve correspondence. Received and then received. So, all in favor? And we're on to disbursements. Councillor Martel, can you bring the disbursements forward? Please move by myself, seconded by Councillor Chris Ward. The municipal council receives the payment of municipal invoices circulated and dated as follows. Report dated October 26, 2023 202, $704,692.12. Report dated October 30th, 2023 203, $122,960.05. Report dated November 1st, 2023 205, $80,117.75. Report dated November 10th, 2023 $1,500. Report dated November 15th, 2023 $219. $544,859.92. Report dated November 20th, 2023 230,239,891.91. Report dated November 21st, 2023 $221,96,693.27. Report dated November 22nd, 2023-222, for a total of $1,996,122.49. Thank you very much. All right, question on disbursements. Does anyone have questions regarding disbursements? 
It's an expensive month. Right. You know, lots of the lots of capital projects that uh, got okay. some beat out until a little bit. Yeah. What's going on with you guys? I'm very good. Yeah, I have a couple hours. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have a couple, and I have asked them in advance, but I the reason that I'm asking again is I just want them for note. There's a couple that I found uh, interesting. So, um, the first one. Uh, and just bear with me. So, so page one twenty six. There's a bill for CNR for railway maintenance. Is that correct? And that was that's for the for the lights at uh, the light crossings at Blair Road and Frederick Street. Yep. And we pay fifty percent of the maintenance costs with uh, CNR. Are those arms or just lights? Arms and they're fully active. And is that a yearly is that a yearly maintenance fee on that? Or is it twice annually? Or? I believe it's uh it's either quarterly or semi annually. I'm not okay. Percent here. okay. So where I'm going with it, right, is is I'm just trying to wrap my head around and so that the group wraps their head around if we enter if we were to ever entertain wrapping or Considering a maintenance agreement with um, <coughs> CN for uh, Gill Street Crossing or the potential Gill Street Crossing, if maintenance was ever brought to us, this is a dollar value roughly that we would see for maintenance costs for that in track. If we agreed, if we ever agreed to pick up maintenance costs. Okay. Just Wanted to note that so that everybody's I have a for that. Uh, for the chair to the tail, the Gill Street Crossing, is that not a spur line to Tasco? Do they not own that line or does CNX own that line? Let's well, not say that. Well, it's CNX. not part of the, I don't think that question is part of the disbursements. So, so unless it relates to the disbursement, let's just. Sorry, I don't mean to cut off your question, but if you want to answer that question, we'll put it in an email. Um, and then ask it through, through email to clear up who owns that. My question was in regard to, to the disbursement and the maintenance cost behind it, what we could foresee, right? Yeah, I hear you, but let's go back. Um, I got a couple more. There's one on here, and you're going to have to for me because I can't find it in the email that I sent out, but it's in regard to the POA. The POA, and I, like I said, I left my notes on the table, so I'm doing the best I can. Um, I was trying to wrap my head around why we were paying POA fees and who we were paying the POA to. So, so just for clarity, can we? Sure. So in, in this case, the county uh, directed us to add the POA fine to their tax roll, and then they paid their taxes with the fine included. So we're just remitting the money back to to uh, to. So it's at, it was actually the county's money. We were just collecting. We were just collecting that. Okay. All right. What case is that on, Mr. Mayor? Uh, like I said, Steve, I okay. uh, deputy, I lost. Okay. That's my notes are sitting on the kitchen table. Okay. My, Carry on. my apologies. Yeah. Um, without going into the weeds on on real tax, because I think real tax probably should be uh, a bigger presentation so that everybody understands. I, I just was a little concerned that it looked like there were several uh, registrations potentially there. Um, so can you Maybe just expand on it a tiny little bit. Sure. Uh, good mayor, uh, good chair slate. Um, our collections process is uh, as we get close to mailing out the final bills, we look at everything that is uh, usually with uh, two or more previous years of arrears that that is due, um, and then in September we send out a final notice with that to the to the. Um, Taxpayer that says, if you don't pay uh, within 30 days, we will proceed with registration of your property. Uh, so 
never didn't get any feedback for the five uh, five properties. So we then gone to the next step, which is to register the properties with real tax. And at that time, uh, once the properties are registered, which will be in the next week, two weeks, um, they have one year to to either pay the arrears off in full or come uh, to us with an extension agreement. And uh, last year, I believe, um, shortly after I started, uh, we did get one extension agreement in. Um, and uh, once that's approved by council, then we, we cancel uh, the, the real tax um, uh, registration. Okay. And, and then they, they go. Um, the, once the, the one year has, has elapsed, then it just automatically goes to, to a tax sale. Um, but we get notified when when things are about to expire. And uh, in, in the past, um, we would uh, use the services of, of our bylaw officer to hand deliver um, the correspondence to the, uh, to, to the homeowner or the taxpayer. Um, so that's that's usually what we would do in our interventions. Okay. All right. So, so two years. So the reason they're getting registered is they're two years behind. At least, yes. At least, um, and this now sets. It's the one year warning once it's it's signed, and and sure. after the, an agreement has to be reached within that year. If it's not reached within that year, then it can go up for tax sale. Correct. And um, we're talking five properties. Six. Uh, correct. Six. I thought sixteen. Is it six? Five? I thought it was five. I thought it was five too. Oh no, sorry. One of them is just a really small value. I thought it was five. So okay. So just I just wanted everyone to be aware that that, that process is going on. I'm hopeful at some point maybe we can come back, you know, on a meeting that isn't you know as as full, and we can actually have a good full discussion so that everyone at the table that's new to a tax sale and you know, how people end up where they are and what our process is through notifications and communications that maybe we can get a little bit more info to the group so that everyone understands exactly what's going on with those. Through the, through the chair, um, we certainly do that at a future meeting once uh, once budget has been, been yep. settled and, and everything. Um, but everything that goes through or that's part of this process is in our uh, collections policy. Yep. So it's uh, um, by law 2017. I'm not sure the, the actual number, but uh, yeah. we we do have all that of those stats outlined in our collections policy. Very clear. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Which is is good, and I, I just noticed it in the disbursement. I noticed the number was unusual. There were a lot of them, and I don't think in all the years that I've been here, I've seen five in one year. So it, it just I thought it was worth noting, and it and it sort of bugged me a little bit. It's the same, same that <coughs> five different problems. Oh, anyway, what else? Okay. Okay. Uh, and lastly, the question I have is looking over the disbursements there were many, many, many um, charges for the parking area at the Meridian Center. So um, when I got the calculator out, it was hard to come up with the final tally through all of those. Um, I don't, I just want a little bit of an update and, and if there's going to be more information coming forward at a later time, possibly uh, in regard to that. Thank you. Yeah, through the uh, through the chair, certainly I'm made aware that we did have some um, additions that were not uh, that were not um, anticipated right off the bat. Uh, but uh, I think what would be uh, best would be to uh, prepare a information item that once that project is that we are. We are over, and uh, there, there is still uh, work to be done with respect to, to, to the paving of some, some, some small works. Okay. So, without again, without turning it into a debate and into too big of a discussion on disbursements, uh, we're going to. You're. We can expect to see budget before budget or as part of budget. Uh, 
you know, a further report outlining this. I, I would anticipate that uh, it may it may it may not get the uh, December fourth that will it 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 will be provided uh Okay. Okay, that's good for me. I just thought it was worth noting, and I know that there's more of the story to be told than gets told in disbursements, but it certainly um, raised a bit of a, a question there for me. So um, does anyone else, and I did, just so everybody is aware, I asked all those questions and more um, through email first, but I also felt that they were worth noting for, for public record as well. So um, I, I just had one small one on that. Are we, are we, are we ceasing to do no more work then until we get it coming back to us? Or uh, through the through through the chair, if the opportunity presents to get the paving completed, uh, we would certainly want to look to pursue with that paving. Uh, although it's um, uh, really reaching the point where I think that it's unlikely that that that, that paving will take place this year. Uh, further questions before I call the question on disbursements. Does anyone else have a question? No. All right. Hearing none, then um, calling for receiving uh, the invoices. So, uh, yeah, I guess, I'll, I guess I'll just call the question. All in favor? All right, so we're on to the bylaw portion of tonight's meeting. Sorry. Sorry. All right, so uh, if the clerk could please note that Councillor Martel has, um, I believe he's filed his paperwork, he's declared a conflict on, on 12A and he has removed himself from, from the table in uh, any of the discussion. So, um, Councillor Smale, I believe you have this item. Can you bring it forward, please? I certainly can. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, <laughs> myself, seconded by uh, Councillor Joe Martel. Continuing, you worship the uh, move by myself and seconded by Councillor Chris Ward that the mover be granted leave to introduce a bylaw to repeal bylaw 21 2021-6, being a bylaw to execute a service agreement with J and D Enterprises OA Eastern Ontario Boneyard for the enhanced recycling program, and this shall constitute first and second reading thereof. All right, first and second reading um, for the repel of, of the uh, boneyard services. So, um, discussion to be on that? No. All right, I'll call the question on favor. Good. And unanimous, so we can proceed to third reading. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, Moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Chris Ward that a bylaw to repel. Bylaw 2021-6 being a bylaw to execute a service agreement with J and D Enterprises, OA, the Eastern Ontario Boneyard for the Enhanced Recycling Program, be now read a third and final time and finally passed, signed, sealed, and numbered 2023-58. Third reading. Is there any question or discussion regarding regarding this? Yeah, there. No. Okay. I'll call the question. All in favor? Okay. One. You voted for that, right? Yep. Are we not getting this? Joe, you can come back to the table. Um, to the clerk, just recognizing that Councilor Martel has re-entered or um item 12B, which is infrastructure on the Ontario borrowing bylaw for the county. Road to wastewater rehab project and Deputy Mayor Dillaval, I believe you have that right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moved by myself and second by Council Martel that the mover be granted leave 
You're going to do is a bylaw to authorize the submit of an application to Ontario Infrastructure and Lands Corporation for finance and certain ongoing capital works of the corporation in the township of Willisburg Cardinal. The municipality to authorize temporary borrowing from OILC to meet the expenditure in the connection connection with such capital works and to authorize long term borrowing for such capital works to the issue of the dis expenditures of OILIC. And this shall read the first and second reading thereof. Thank you. First and second reading on the, on the uh, getting money from the uh, Ontario infrastructure. So, any questions, comments on this? Uh, so this is where you know locking into twenty years. This is paid by the uh, by the users. So I'm not sure. Sure. Uh, so I can't remember what the interest rate was we were putting in that. Do you remember? We uh, we won't know until the application is through. Okay. No. We to the to the uh, treasurer. Do we have an idea roughly? Um, I would think it would be similar to the venture rates of. Uh, of the Johnstown range, so four point six. So we are, we are in the fours, so we're not in, yeah, in the mid five. So I had it in my brain. We are in the mid fives. So, so, so yeah. So yeah. That's good. Yeah. Good. Send off that. Can I go to Not yet. Not until okay. I call the question. Here. Any further discussion on first? <laughs> <laughs> all right. All in favor? All right. Get in. Let's see if you can go. Yeah, we have to get this one done. Move by myself and second yeah. by. Council might tell that the bylaw of the authorized submission of an application to Ontario Infrastructure Lane Corporation, OILC, to finance a certain ongoing capital works. Corporation Township for Riversburg County and the municipality to authorize temporary board from the OILC to meet expenditures in connection with special capital works and authorize long term bonds borrowing for such capital works to this issue. The expenditures of two OILC be now read a third and final time. Finally passed, signed, sealed, and numbered 2023 59. All right, comments, question further? So good to get that done. Yeah. Really good to get the project done. Yep. Project done. Project funded. And it's, it is spread out, what do you say? Is it 20 years? Correct. Through the check. Yeah. So the impact is. Like fifty thousand plus per year on on end users, right? Yeah, it really softens you. Really softens the load for sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um. Any comments? Further comments or questions on this item? All right. Hearing none. Then I'll call the question. All in favor? Nice to see. You. Job getting completed. Sure I'll get my dream of the week. That's a good one. All right. So okay. All right, so the twelve C, A, B, C. So to amend bylaw, zoning bylaw twenty twenty two dash thirty seven twenty seventy three Dundas Street Zoning Plan. Uh, Councilor Ward, I believe you have that item. Uh, you, Mr. Mayor, uh, moved by myself and seconded by Councilor Wadi Snail. That the mover be granted leave to introduce a bylaw to amend zoning bylaw 2022 37 from 2073 Dundas Street, Xander Planning, um, on behalf of 273 3521 Ontario, Inc. and this shall constitute first and second reading thereof. Okay. Question, comments regarding this item on first and second reading? Okay, I'll call the question. All in favor? Speak. Yeah. You can proceed to the third reading. All right, moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Wadi Smale that a bylaw to amend the zoning bylaw 22 2023 37 2073 Dundas Street, Xander Plan Inc., on behalf of 273 3521 Ontario, be now read a third and final time and finally passed, signed, sealed, and numbered 2023 69. Third reading. Questions, comments, anything? No, I was thinking it's good to see some more uh, yeah. more residents being built in Cardinal. Uh, yeah, I mean, I welcome it. It's a bit of a, uh, a bit of a 
concern there, but I, uh, I'm happy to see them putting some more people down there. So. Great. Anyone else? No? Okay. All right. Then I'll call the question. All in favor? Good. And then we are on to amend zoning bylaw 22 37 for 2084 down the street. Jenna Sander plant and Deputy Mayor Philibar. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moved by myself and seconded by Council Ward that the move would be granted. I leave to any use of bylaw to amend zoning bylaw 2022 37 2084 Dundas Street. Sander plant and Operating by 273 3, 3, which shall constitute the first and second readings are First and second reading on uh, 2084 changes to that uh, property as well. Um, questions, comments before we call the vote? Seeing none, then all in favor? And yeah, must go to third. Thank you. Moved by myself and second by Council Ward that the bylaw be amended to the zoning bylaw 2022 37 2084 Dundas Street from the plan Inc. operating by 2733521 Ontario. We now read a third and final time. Finally passed, signed seal number 2023 61. Okay, we're on to third reading. Uh, um, on 2084. Uh, questions, comments, and all on this one? Same as last one. Yeah, I think this one this one just adds the ability to add the extra apartments on the on the ground floor, basically making what's already there legal, right? Yeah. Okay, so um did you have questions? Sorry. No, I just oh, oh, okay. say all in favor. Yeah, no. Um, if there are no further comments or questions, then I'll call the question. All in favor? All right. Okay. I, I thought he'd already voted, but oh, gracious. Doing <clears throat> the best I can. You're really good. <laughs> all right. So we are on to item uh, 12B, which is the Scott Road. Transfer Station Waste Management Bylaw. And Councillor Ward, I believe you have that item, but before you do that, I again to the clerk, if you could just note the minutes that Councillor Martel has stepped away from the table and filed the appropriate paperwork. No. Moved by myself, and seconded by Councillor Wadsdale, that the mover be granted leave to introduce a bylaw to establish, maintain, and regulate a waste management system and to provide for the establishment of policy, regulations, and fees for the disposal of municipal waste and other refuse at the municipal transfer station. And this shall constitute first and second reading thereof. Okay, first and second reading on the transfer station. Thoroughly discussed, thoroughly debated. Nice changes on the other further discussions before plan third. There are none, then I'll call the question. All in favor? Mm -hmm. Third reading. Okay. Moved by myself and seconded again by Councillor Wadi Smale that a bylaw to establish, maintain, and regulate a waste management system and to provide for the establishment of policies, regulation, and fees for the disposal of the municipal waste and other refuse at municipal transfer station be now read a third and final time and finally passed, signed, sealed, and numbered 2023 62. Thank you very much. Third reading, comments, questions on. Transfer station, Stephen. No. Well, no, for me, it's to you know, um, yeah, I'll leave you alone. Uh, I'll call the all okay. I know you don't like it. I speak up. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will do something. <laughs> All right, if we can note that Joe, Sir Joe has made it back to the table. Um, if you will go to 12F, which is the Emergency Management Program Bylaw Update, Deputy Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Move by myself and second by Council Ward that the move would be granted to leave the to, to provide for the Establishment and adoption of emergency management program for the township of Elizabeth Cardinal. And this shall constitute the first and second reading thereof. Thank you. First and second reading for the uh, 
for the updates to the emergency management plan or program, excuse me. Uh, comments on first and second reading before we proceed to oh, We never need to use this. Uh, all in favor? Good, good, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moved by myself and second by Council Ward that the bylaw to provide the status and jobs for the emergency management program for the township of Edwardsburg Cardinal. Now be read a third and final time. Finally passed, signed seal number 2023 63. Thank you. Just a uh, part of fulfilling our requirement, correct? updating things in the emergency and reviewing the bylaws and updating them to get them into compliance. We still have, do we have one more to go? Uh, uh, through the mayor, uh, with, with, the, uh, with the bylaw update, mainly it was just uh, refining the uh, uh, members of the emergency control group, yeah. uh, especially for, for, for training purposes, exactly to, to limit the, the, the number of four personnel that we needed in order to uh, uh, to, to be in our uh, annual compliance, and also just uh, a couple more uh, refinements with respect to the explanation of uh, of an emergency. So it, it still is with the with the mayor. Um, however, the, uh, the majority of the council could pass a, a resolution declaring the emergency uh, terminated. So we just added uh, to that clause in there for for clarity purposes. Yeah, I, it was one of those one of those questions actually that I had I had sent out when I was reviewing um, uh, when we were doing agenda week and and it was it's like oh yeah we did have that uh, we did have that discussion and I had actually forgotten that we had uh, during that meeting that we had had that discussion but I remember I remember the um, uh, the comparisons and why you need the ability to to actually. Um, Sometimes, so yeah, I think the difference really is uh, to, to the uh, yeah. when, when you declare an emergency, uh, it's, it's, it's not really a time for a great discussion. It gives power to the mayor to do that, but I think like once an emergency is for rest, there is that opportunity. But the mayor doesn't feel comfortable enough to terminate that uh, emergency because of the uh, yeah, absolutely. I think that that's that that's fantastic. All right, so so sort of modernizing then and, and getting this up up to a twenty twenty three uh, standard. So um, comments, questions, anyone? All right, then I'll call the question. All in favor? Yeah. Um, and we are, there is no G, there is no H, and then we're on to 13, which is the CAO's administrative update. Oh, that's really chair. Before you go there, what happened? I was talking to Mr. Simpson. What happened to June? Yeah, through the, uh, through, through, through the chair, uh, we need to notice that the final report uh, wasn't included, and the council should not have final report until the last report. So we'll have to come back until the end of December. Um, we will look to have that on December eleventh, which would be the council meeting. But it won't be passed until the end of December, a month from now, right? It would be, it would be it would be passed, passed on December eleventh. Yeah, right. That's council meeting. But then, okay, so we don't have to come back. Okay, council meeting. Thank you. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay, so administrative up, update, Councillor Snell. We'll do Councillor Snell first uh, to the CAO, bring it on, and then we can do the update once it's on the floor. Sure. Right, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Move by myself and seconded by uh, Joe Martell, Councillor Joe Martell, the Municipal Council received CAO's administration report as presented. All right, CAO, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, uh, we had uh, received uh, work from Augusta for the, uh, we call it the second annual uh, food bank uh, challenge, where uh, the Township of Augusta and Prescott and yourself, we, uh, you know, we look to uh, collect as many uh, uh, food items for the uh, local food bank. Uh, so our, uh, certainly we're looking to, to sort of put a rail on that new December 14th time 
time frame that it's going to have the items in so that so that the items can be counted and you know we want to uh, get those passed to the uh, food bank on uh, uh, December uh, 15th. It's sort of uh, signaling a little bit of energy normal with respect to the uh, municipal office during the holiday hours. So we will look at um, uh, the office will close uh, Friday, December uh, 22nd at noon and reopen on Tuesday, uh, January 2nd. With respect to the EV charter burial program, the Rito St. Lawrence uh, is in the midst of preparing a, a proposal for us to consider regarding uh, the submission of uh, a food program. And applications are uh, due by January 31st, 2024. We may be uh, having a, uh, another party make a presentation with respect to. Uh, to, to this program uh, as well. Uh, I'm not sure if they're going to be confirmed. Okay, so it, it's potentially still on, on, on our particular area. That's on the EV charge? That is on the EV charge and the area. So there is somebody else that's looking in the municipality to do that as well? There is somebody else that is looking at to 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 uh, enter into the city of Okay, interesting. Sorry, continue. Nope, that's uh, that's by uh, bylaw. Uh, we are now uh, into the later season, so certainly um, the bylaw enforcement officer will be looking at that. Public works uh, to ensure that uh, vehicles are off the street during the uh, during the other events. And just a note that uh, in, in, in the fall, there were some big you know, cleanup efforts uh, at a location uh, where uh, clean yards and uh, the vehicle, uh, vehicle and the property. Under Treasury, so um, and, and he was in uh, today to start the interim audit. Uh, he was speaking with the treasurer. They uh, they completed that portion uh, today, and they will be able to be back until uh, the February 26th uh, timeline. Uh, with respect to um, accounts receivable. Um, just kind of signaling that the, the timing of receiving some of the federal and provincial uh, grant funding uh, in comparison to year end, uh, we, will, uh, we will likely see an increase in, in those uh, receivables uh, during that reporting period. And with respect to facilities and uh, recreation, uh, we have uh, scheduled uh, on Sunday, December uh, 10th. The holiday cookie uh, decorating from 12 until 3. Um, usually, that event sells out relatively quick, so pre registration is required. Or we are we are actually uh, sold out. There we go. We are uh, we have full registration, which is awesome. Don't need to send out that message. You're looking for more to uh, more to to attend. And just another uh, proactive approach taken. Uh, was uh, handing out uh, candy canes with the uh, QR code on it at the uh, Land of the Night Parade in Prescott. And uh, as noted, there's been uh, about uh, 100 kits to the site that within the, the first three days. So that was uh, a great initiative. Uh, Legion Way tree removals have uh, started and they will be completed by December 15th. Maybe something that member of council here from a few residents or in some of the uh, Large uh, trees that uh, are very uh, can be removed. Just a note with the Johnstown Ball Diamonds looking to attend uh, that out um, later this week uh, so that uh, we can have the uh, site meeting and, and have that close uh, as part of the 2024 budget so that if, uh, if we are moving forward, we can get that. Uh, Work done uh, in, in advance of the, uh, of the season. Um, with respect to public uh, work, just uh, a couple of notes about uh, the collection of leaf and yard waste in Cardinal. Uh, 
uh, in Springfield Village on sale in Westburg. In addition to that, as, as you're all well aware, the, the transfer station we received roughly uh, you know, free of charge during November, and uh, we did uh, make another uh, day available through the week uh, on November 14th. For uh, we did hear some um, feedback that uh, certain residents were were working uh, on Saturdays and were not able to uh, to attend on Saturday. And, uh, so we did uh, we did accommodate in that uh, in that way. Uh, Harry Street Outlet, uh, unfortunately, contractor uh, was experiencing some uh, parts uh, issues. Uh, we, uh, from the last we heard, we, we certainly feel that it should be sorted out and work completed uh, in the next couple of weeks. Um, with respect to environmental services and the operations. Side, um, the winterization of the fire hydrants, uh, servicing of the, uh, of, of the generators. I think, with respect to the central wastewater system, just as a note, uh, I know that there were some concerns uh, raised with respect to the wet the dry flow uh, assessment report that was required uh, through MECP. Uh, we do have an extension uh, granted until uh, January 31st, 2024. Just as no part of that was the uh, was the offset limit, but uh, the report has been kept to the to the base report, which I believe was closer to that 30, 32,000 versus the uh, 60,000. With respect to municipal drains. Uh, County Road 2 to report drain. So the uh, contractor in here did the walkthrough. Uh, no, uh, no deficiencies noted on that first phase. So we should uh, hopefully in the, uh, in, in the next uh, few weeks uh, um, see the as built uh, survey and uh, then substantial completion of the issue once, uh, once the final payment request from the contractor. Respect to fire department, yes, uh, no. Um, uh, the uh, tanker seven will be going in for service uh, to repair an exhaust leak and uh, check the internet. Keep coming on uh, under the fire division end of it. Uh, we have uh, members participating in emergency exercise of fairly feet. All those staff have done that with representatives at Greenfield uh, Global. Of note, with the uh, facility, the whole uh, unexpected uh, repair with respect to the uh, uh, heat exchanger. So, uh, but however, uh, it, it's anticipated uh, that that will not have a significant uh, budgetary impact overall within the, uh, within the department. And uh, all of the ladder inspections and testing uh, were completed uh, in the last month. I'm going to go over to the chair. If there's any questions on any of those items, I'll be in touch. All right. Councilman? Mm -hmm. yeah. Chris? Sure, of course. Uh, Anchor 7, that's not the new one, right? That's, that's the new Correct. Right. It, it, it is not. Okay. Um, and. Um, it would be light up the night for you guys. You did a great job as well. We had a good time there, I think, with the Tandy got our candy canes, and it was good to see all those people there. You know, I saw so many fierce faces that we know from you know, from uh, uh, from Spencer and Johnstown Paradigm as well. So it's 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 good to see the community gets together. We we travel across boundaries and, and enjoy those things there. So uh, it was good to see that we had it had a lot of people there as well. And uh, and floats. Um, with regards to the EV charge uh, charge um, program. Ourselves preparing a proposal. Is that um, just maybe just general clarification? Is that the proposal for them? Uh, is, is there a cost to us that we're anticipating, or is it the other way around, or something entirely different? What page is that? So, oh, sorry, that's on page uh, 170 of 175. So, so through the food chairs, um, a little bit in, in what says we're learning a little bit more with respect to the. Uh, uh, to the uh, Program. It looks like uh, there there is funding available up to seventy five uh, percent. Uh, 
funding, and then there would be 25% uh, uh, maybe looked at from, from, from the municipality. Yeah, okay. um, up to a million bucks, right? Uh, I believe it, I, I believe it is up to uh, up to the yeah. So, in fact, that we would be uh, so one of the uh, one of the items uh, that typically the Rio St. Lawrence would not be on the uh, outside of their uh, service area, but with a program like this, they would be able to. So it would be it would be possible for uh, for for those uh, charging stations to be placed in uh, Johnson and Spencer Road. Yeah, okay. I have a question. Mm -hmm. I have one more. Okay. I'll I'll you know. Know. Well, and I was just disappointed about the holiday cookie decorating because I did challenge the mayor to a cookie decorating competition, and I that was happening with this for kids only. So maybe next year we'll have something for adults to do. So. <laughs> See, it was important. Uh, the chair to the CAO. I see. Uh, Chris, our road supervisor is here. I have a really concerned question I, I want to ask you. I, I didn't notice until just now. Mm -hmm. Under the operations of public works, you got down here great road grading maintenance on various gravel roadways. I see that's being performed now. Is that correct? Because I, I was buying a couple of roads and I thought they look like they've been graded. And the reason I'm bringing it up, Dave, is like, for 30 years I worked, I never, we never graded roads in fall. You, you leave them hard so the gravel doesn't get loose and doesn't get caught off in the winter. And then we don't get complaints about all the gravel being put in the ditch. And now they're all being done. And I was wondering why is that, uh, is that a new policy or I've never seen it done. Uh, through, the, uh, through, through the chair, uh, I, I would suspect that uh, uh, the public works manager has has utilized that technique uh, uh, in his previous experience in, in, in failing that it, it has worked uh, well. Um, I'm not sure if they, at, at what point they if they have uh, stopped uh, grading roads or if they're, if they're still actually in that process. Okay. So, but I can certainly uh, do some additional uh, follow up in that. Thank you. That's all. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I just have a couple. One is um, uh, we're hiring public works. Is that a full time position or part time position, uh, Mr. CAO? And with respect to the equipment operator, for the yeah, time, that would be a full time position. Full time position? Okay. And uh, Pumper 7, is, is that fairly new? That Pumper is going so. in with the, yeah, with the, is that a, the newest one? No. This, uh, I would say well over fifty. Well, well over fifty years. Okay, I thought it was a I'm thinking it's closer to. No, that's fine. I want to say closer to twenty. Okay, I, no, I was concerned about that because it was. I, I was afraid it was new, and uh, I also uh, uh, we had a good time. Like I said, uh, like. Uh, Council board said we had a great time at the uh, light up the Christmas fire hall, and uh, job well done, people. Hopefully, we can get another month with our name strong. <laughs> Be ahead of our budget. Get back on track on budget. So, so, so it's a good way. Good way. So, yeah, yeah. Probably yeah. <laughs> for tomorrow. So thank you. I got something up in the fire. I'll bring that up. Uh, so, thank you. And just a quick bylaw question for the CAO for you, Mr. Chair. Mm -hmm. uh, when the bylaw officer is issuing and distributing public educational materials, what exactly does that mean? It's a ticket. Uh, when it comes to litter parking, um, we actually have our bylaw officer go out to um, different public areas, so uh, gas stations, uh, post offices, um, some of the restaurant regions, places where the general public in our communities visit from time to time, or probably should, at least don't I guess, um, where we post educations as to what the restrictions are for the and then just this week past, um, 
So it's like a proactive thing where he sort of targets areas that could become an issue and says, hey, it's going to snow in two months. So you want to watch it. Awesome. Thank you. Good. Uh, don't know that I really have any questions. Just um, I think the only one of note for me and, and then um, worries me a little as the pumper tanker seven with the check engine light. And my worry is always with those is that that's the same motor that's in all of the other ones that had the blown motor. Is it, do we know? Uh, or you can follow up. Yeah, I, I have to follow up and I do not believe so. Okay, all right. Because I, I just, as soon as I see that, it makes me cringe and worry and might try to check the way on the two years. Yeah, well, but those I, ones didn't. Um, <laughs> and I, I do find the uh, the EV program, I find a little confusing because depending upon how you read it, it's 90% coverage for municipalities. So if you read all the way to the bottom in the little notes for municipalities, government agencies, and not for profits, it does say does say 90% in the top parts of it, it looks like it may have been changed from what it originally was and says uh, 75%. Um, and just, does Rideau St. Lawrence only qualify for 75% and would we qualify for 90% if we actually did that? So through the, through the chair, I think we're still trying to- uh, Okay, that we go some, some of those details. Okay. Yeah, I know. I know because when this pro program initially came out, I remember back to when I was on community development committee before I ran for deputy mayor. Um, Ms. Kellerman, over and over and over, applied or wanted to apply for EV, and we we sort of pushed it off and pushed it off and pushed it off. But I think it's time. And I know I sent this forward the day that it came out, uh, and it was the ninety percent. I really find. You know, it's it's a good way to, and it's up to a million bucks. So ultimately, it would be a hundred thousand dollars for a million dollars worth of work uh, in setting up, you know, a critical infrastructure for that revolution that is going to happen. So, um, you know, it's it is one of those things that I think that we need to make sure we have an application for, like it's through, whether it's through our cell or whether it's on our own. I still think that we we really should support that program. Um, and I think that's it. So, yes, one item I believe we have a which is uh, in the today, uh, for the the lights are in decorations. And you you will notice that we are one week short. Um, it appears that somebody decided that you know, they needed that more than uh, more than. Typically, what happens is we, we, we put those, apply the bowl that they're going to go up on uh, in advance of Rico St. Lawrence coming that, that day. And uh, it appears when somebody decided to put it up, throw it in their trunk, and uh, one disappeared between being put out and put up. For what? A blight? The eggs of the reefs. Of reefs. Oh, reefs. Where was it? So you put one out, you put them out it's there. there. It's a public works department. You know, and there was one across from the old hotel. And we were notified by, by a resident of the hotel. She was working at a property by the hotel. So she was. We were only late in there because the base is not built. So that's pretty good. So we were put it in there. <laughs> Through the chair, did the guy have a green suit and a little dog with him? That's the chair. Wow. Is that something we contact police about? Or do we just let something like that go? 
the fact that we didn't have a license plate, but unfortunately, we don't, we don't have much. You got a license plate, you said? No, no. Not. That's so sad. It's, it's, so it's, sad. it's unfortunate. Yeah. Well, well, well thank that, you. Uh, it was worth it. Okay. I happened to be driving by and I noticed that the big tree was getting lights wrapped around it by the, the guys in the bucket truck or whoever was in the guys, but the people in the bucket truck. And, and I thought, oh, it's fantastic. It's going to be done. So that's, yeah, I love it. that's great. Driving even made you sad. Oh, okay. Well, it's sad that that's where we're at. But... Okay. So I think, Councillor Smale, did you pass the motion down? Yes, you did. All right. So are there further questions on CAO's report? <laughs> I've got it. Well, you have already done. No? Okay, hearing none, then I'll call the question on uh, receiving that report. All in favor? And who has mayor's report? Usually that's the deputy mayor, I think. Um, oh, sorry, it's inquiries and notice of motion. Thank you first. Anyone have any inquiries? Oh, or notice of motion. Thank you. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Snell. Um, I just want to mention that uh, deputies are still that's allowing right. myself and headed to. Uh, a little parade held by Johnstown community, and it went over really well, and it was well organized, and uh, really had a good time. There's a lot of effort put into it, and uh, I really enjoyed it. And, uh, good job by the people who put it on. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, did you have one? I just want to echo uh, household 4142 on the list drive was responsible for that uh, parade, and we had 17 floats. In that parade, so when I jumped in the car and went to see the tree, and it looked good and stressful. Everything's rocking, but we'll find it. <laughs> so, thank you. Since we appear to be changing, uh, increase the notice of motion to uh, uh, council statements, I'm happy to jump in as well. Then, um. Uh, I, 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 do, you have to I don't I, well, but I was going to say I knew something today and I thought it was worth noting and I think it's, it's something that uh, you know from uh, from the uh, the rec department I believe it is but it might be from the clerk's office um, the community calendar on our website has a lot of stuff on there it's really great to see how populated that is there's there's events everywhere and uh, you know some of them are our events through the rec area and some of them are other private events that are going on and it's just I think it's a really good tool and I think more people should know about it because and add more because uh, I don't know how you get there is two people. people. I have no idea how you get uh, there. Me neither, but I did notice great. I mean, there is there is some stuff there. Oh yeah, people. So uh, share it. Yep, yeah, share it. Exactly. Try to get it. Share it. Feel free to share it or whatever social media. Okay, right, well, good. Forward. Thanks. All right. Um. So that's it for inquiries. Notice no no actual notices. <laughs> Joe, you must have something you want to talk about. Somebody. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, then moving on to mayor's Moving on. Oh, that's not nice. Uh, okay. So moving on to mayor's report, then I think you probably have that motion to move forward. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moved by myself and seconded by Council Ward and this proud Council of Seas Mayor's report as presented. All right. So thank you to the Deputy Mayor. Really, really quick. Uh, Council Ward uh, and myself attended the Spencerville Whoville uh, tree lighting uh, event. And I just wanna say to um, all of the organizers, that was a full day back there, starting with the uh, Spencerville market at the Drummond building and to the uh, organizers that continue to do a fantastic job there from uh, all accounts, uh, very well attended uh, and, and very well run. Um, and doing it, the tree light up again, uh, well attended and, and fantastic night out in Spencerville. Um, certainly drove by on the way home um, here in Johnstown and want to commend the folks at uh, on Elizabeth Street and um, for the the uh, parade, the, the small parade that was <laughs> that was there. There was a nice big bonfire burning. It looked like it was a, a fantastic time. Uh, as well. So well done to to all of the folks involved with, with those projects. It's nice to see that community spirit, especially this time of year a lot. Um, I will say as well that the CAO and I had the opportunity today actually to meet with uh, 
um, the president, uh, Rhiannon Niles at uh, HFI to have a discussion about, you know, their operations and their potential future plans and uh, where the township fits in, um, you know, as a, as a partner um, in, those, in those plans. So um, uh, I will also, I guess I, I can add, I did say when we came in here, I was late for, for a reason. The CAO and myself also attended uh, today as well, the, uh, just a tour of the uh, Prescott wastewater facilities, um, which I don't know if everyone realizes it or not, but it is actually in our industrial park, <laughs> um, just, just before you get to Commerce Drive. Um, it was fantastic to go through and, and learn and see what their system uh, is is like. So I think that's it for everything that, uh, that I have to update on. And if anyone has any questions for me, they can fire me. All right, hearing no questions then. Um, mayor's report as presented, all in favor? So, we are at a lovely uh, question period. There's nobody still online. Nope. Okay, so then we are moving into closed session. Councillor Martelli, you can take us into closed session. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Chris Ford. That is the House of Procedures to closed session at 8 we have an order to address a matter pertaining to A, section 2392C for both the pending acquisition or disposition of land by the municipality or local board, specifically industrial land. Section 2392B, personal matters about an identifiable individual, including municipal or local board employees, specifically youth citizen of the year. C, section 2392B, personal, personal matters about an identif identifiable individual, including municipal or local board employees, specifically operational sustainability, and then it's at the closed session dated October 30th, 2023. Sorry. All right. So we're moving into a uh, motion to move in. What time was the quoted time to the clerk? 825. Okay. So then I call the question to go into closed. All in favor? No. Good. We're in closed five minute recess. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Chris Ward, that the closed meeting of Municipal Council does now adjourn and the open meeting does now resume at 9.42 p.m. Great. Moving out of closed session, back into open session. I will call the question. All in favor of coming back into open? Great. So the first item would be... Uh, Councillor Ward, I think you have some minutes. Thank you. Moved by myself. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, seconded by Councillor Weissmail, that Municipal Council receives and approves the minutes of closed session dated October 30th, 2022. All right, so approval of receiving and approving the minutes of closed session dated October 30th. Uh, call a question. All in favor? Okay, and reporting out of closed session, Council Max in closed session. Um, under section 239-2C for proposed or pending acquisition or dispositional land by the municipality or local board, specifically industrial land. And we gave direction to the CAO. Um, item B, section 239-2B, personnel matters about an identifiable individual, including municipal or local board employees, specifically choosing the youth and citizens of the year. Um, council provided direction to staff and um, under C, uh, 239-2B, again, personnel matters about an identifiable individual, including municipal or local board employees, specifically operational sustainability. Uh, council received uh, information on, on operational sustainability. Um, we also uh, reviewed and closed those minutes that we just approved. Uh, that's the reporting out of closed session. And I believe we have the confirmation bylaw. And so. Sir? Sorry, sorry, Yeah. 
Okay, moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Wadi Smail that a bylaw to adopt, confirm, and ratify matters dealt with by resolution be now passed, signed, sealed, and numbered 2023 66. Bringing everything that we discussed tonight into law and effect. Um, I'll call the question on the confirmatory bylaw. All in favor? Okay, and Councillor Smail, you have adjournment. I do. Thank you, Your Worship. For the move of myself, seconded by Chris Ward, Councilor, that the Central Council does adjourn at 9.45 p.m. Debatable, 9.45. I will call the question. All in favor? All right. Where are you? The woman has shot. Yeah. Uh, no. Thanks. <laughs>